What's going on? It's your boy S.J. the South Scott, and today we are discussing the Scuff Reflex FPS and Scuff Envision Pro controllers, and more specifically, why I bought the Scuff Envision controller when I already own the Reflex FPS and why I would buy this controller again. So if that's something you're interested in hearing about, stick around and we'll get right into it. I bought these, the Scuff Reflex, this one's a custom, FPS in November of 2022. But uh, prior to using this controller, this Scuff FPS, I was, uh, Scuff FPS, FPS, Reflex FPS, sorry. I was using the Scuff Reflex Pro controller. And there's, there's nothing wrong with this controller. This controller was absolutely great. Um, it was the first PS5 scuff controller that I started to use and it's got the got great buttons on the back I or the paddles on the back. I really enjoyed using this controller But when they announced the FPS I figured this would be better fit for me as a Call of Duty streamer to use this controller rather than this controller and the main major feature for this one was the hair triggers and the much lighter design of this one. This one doesn't have the rumble in it, so there's no vibrations in this controller, while this one does have all the vibration mechanisms and the graded triggers, um, depending on what game you're playing. But this one is significantly lighter, and it feels the exact same as that controller, but much better in your hands. I loved it. I fell in love with this the Scuf uh, Reflex FPS controller absolutely great it was already familiar because of the previous controller i was using i was so accustomed to it i had some great gameplay it was just a great time using this controller but uh, all good things do come to an end and this started to have some problems it started with a little bit of stick drift which which is normal to have stick drift but it started with some stick drift that I had on this left stick right here. And and that's totally okay. I got used to it and I gamed with it and it didn't affect my shots at all. But then it gradually got worse. The, the stick drift turned into a permanent input. So if I were to move it to the left, to the right, like I am right now, it would, and it like it about the, as you see, the stick is bouncing back to the middle. It would hold the input for as if i was holding it to the right and i can't play like that and then if i tried to undo it i'd have to go to the other direction and a lot of the times when i went to the far left to undo that right input it would start moving as if i was holding the input to the left and in a shooting game it's impossible to use a controller where you physically can't utilize one of the two sticks so this became basically a dead weight for me and I started to do some research I realized I could send this into scuff for them to repair unfortunately whenever I did send it into scuff it was past the 180 day period of time where I could do this uh, send this in for free to get fixed but they said that it would be about $80 um, after they'd done the review uh, or the analysis that they did to determine what the issue was on this um, and it would be $80 for them to fix it and send it back to me so I agreed they already had the controller might as well have them fix it for $80 rather than paying another $300 for a new controller they sent it back honestly was not that long of a process to do but it is kind of frustrating having to deal with it entirely via email um, so if that's not something you want to do uh, I can completely understand you there but it is a process you have to do almost entirely through email and through their ticketing system online um so it's it's something to get through but but it is worth it and they are pretty quick once once they get it into their hands so i got it back afterwards and the input on the left stick worked great the right stick felt fine i don't have stick drift like i was having before i don't have the holding of the input or anything like that I'm using this controller for a couple more months and then i start having another issue of course right and the issue is with some of the inputs on the back, specifically this back right. So this is my right hand right here. Um, the back right pad exterior paddle, some of the inputs would not register on this thing. And it 
it, it was critical to me because this is my jump button. It's it's also, in, if you're familiar with Warzone, it's how you cut your shoot uh, or you pull your shoot when you're falling. So I was breaking my legs in Warzone so often because the input wouldn't register. And it got to a point where I had to change this interior paddle to be my jump button and I stopped using this button all together. I, I only use the interior paddle for the longest time because I didn't want to send it in and then pay another $80 for them to fix it. It just felt like I could do this workaround, which is less than ideal. I'm, I've already spent $380 on this controller. Granted, this is customized, so I don't know how much it is not customized, but um, I've already spent so much money on this controller. I don't want to put more money into it. Then Scuff announced the Envision and the Envision Pro and i saw this thing and yeah, i saw the g buttons that they had lit up on the bottom and i saw that it had some extra buttons on the side but more importantly i saw that it didn't have removable paddles here and i think that part of the issue with this one is the fact that these paddles remove and then all they all these paddles are clicking are these tiny tiny buttons underneath here um and so I have a feeling that that's where the issue was happening, but these ones are non-removable paddles. I don't know how the mechanism works when you press the button, but I was sold as soon as I got this. There's, as I mentioned, the, the five G buttons on here, there's these two side buttons right here, right? And then the four mappable paddles on the back, and I have hair triggers, and you can choose how much of a hair trigger you wanna use. So I have it all the way because that's the best tactical advantage for Call of Duty. This one sold me immediately. And I've described this controller as having the shape of an Xbox controller with the button layout of a PlayStation controller, which is the perfect combination. And so just for reference, just so you know, this is an Xbox controller, so you can kind of see what I mean when I'm, when I'm saying the, the, the shape of it, right? And this is the PlayStation, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with the button layout. It's great. Best of both worlds. I love this. Love the feel of this controller. This controller came in at a significantly cheaper price. The Envision Pro was $180. Now this is customized, so this one's a bit more, but the starting price of the Envision Pro is $180 and the Envision is 130. I think that there's some features I've, like wireless, wireless connectivity that you have with the Envision Pro that the Envision does not. Um, and there's some other features, but I'm not too familiar with that. But I absolutely love this controller. I'm, rock, I'm rocking a control freak on here as well, um, in case you're curious. I've been using this exclusively. I have not touched these other controllers. It's been great. I'm, I plan to continue using this for as long as I have functionality of this controller. It's got everything that we were familiar with here in the previous scuff controllers, but I'm not having any of the issues that I was having with these other controllers with this controller. Now, granted, it's only been two months, um, but I will say that this controller has a one year warranty unlike the scuff reflex fps which only had a 180 day warranty and the issues i started having with the fps controller happened before the one year but after 180 days so if there's any issues that i have with this i'm really hoping it happens before the one year period of time so that i can send it in for free and then they can replace it but that gave me the peace of mind knowing that I have a whole year, double the warranty length of what I had on the FPS. It, it sold me, it's cheaper, it's got more functionality, got a longer warranty, very, very enticing to me. Immediately purchased as soon as it got, it was available for me to purchase. And I will say that the customization mapping for this controller is different than the customization mapping for the FPS on here on the FPS you just press you press and hold the buttons and then you click on which two buttons you want to map so say you want to you you have to wait for a certain input and then while this is blinking here and it, this isn't plugged in right now but while this is blinking you select the two two buttons you want to map and then it's mapped on this one it's via the IQ app that you configure this and you you set all your settings and all the things that you need to do you do it in that iq app but you don't need to have the app open in order to play 
using this controller. You you can use the controller without the app being open. Say you turn on your computer and your your controller's plugged in, you can hop right into some Warzone if you want. That is a good thing. But I will say that despite you being able to do use this control controller without using the IQ app, I would advise to still open the IQ app because there have been a handful of times where certain inputs won't register um, and I'll be like, what's going on here? But then I'll open up the IQ app and it'll work immediately. So it, it resolves a problem. I would just leave it open in the background on your computer whenever you're gaming and it doesn't take up too much, uh, too much capacity of your computer. You should be fine. There's plenty more that I can go into to di discussing this controller, but I really wanted to just focus on why I upgraded and I do consider it an upgrade uh, from the FPS to the Envision Pro. So if you want to learn more about this, uh, I'm happy to make another video. Let me know in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Um, I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.